Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to my interim assessment, uh, flipped classroom, pre-recorded, whatever this is. Let's get started. So you might be wondering, I've been here an interim assessment. I don't know what this is. Rachel, you got to help me. So here are some basic facts about your interim assessment. Uh, it's an assessment given to students and it'll tell you what kids need to be retaught, what they need to relearn and what you need to review. You should give two interim assessments a year. You're gonna give one in semester one and another in semester two. Should be about halfway through the semester. You don't wanna go too late into the semester because then you are out of time for that whole reteaching thing that you gotta do. Please send out a calendar invite to your DC and to me as soon as you know the day you wanna give an interim assessment, you can always change it. So reserve those days and your DC can approve it or say like, nah, you need to have it earlier or later or whatever it is. You're not allowed to read this as a summative assessment since you're just looking for information from these kids, but you can put it as a formative assessment and a completion grade in power school. If it's either they do it or they don't do it or they don't do a good job doing it, that'll be up to you. A bit of a rationale. You want to see which skill, topic, or standard students are struggling with, especially for those region-based courses, but for everyone else, it's still important. Also, the, stand, the state mandates this information, so we got to do it, and I'm going to help you out. A couple of things you have access to is this data assessment website, and you have PowerSchool, and you have your own special spreadsheet. So here's what you could do. If you're really confused and you need some help, here's the uh, how to log page. It has a link to the August recording. I also am doing lunch and learns. I'll post those recordings here. And it just has uh, some tips and tricks that you're going to want to need to get started with your interim assessment. I have a little screenshot of a sample there. It's honestly just a test that covers everything you've done up until that point. And I have a beautiful way to record that data to help you analyze it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this tab here, the assessment data tab. If you wanna totally start from scratch, you can click on one of these. I prefer you use this one, it'll take you to make a copy. If the giant spreadsheet is too overwhelming, we do have the basic option, but you're not gonna get as much out of that. But if you're drowning in data and you need the basic one, you can start with that. But I do have underneath each uh, department here, a what I think each class is. If your class isn't here, or if you know a class doesn't exist, let me know and I'll either add something or pull something out. But you find your cluster and you click on that. And this will be the sheet that you worked on in August with me. So let's take a look at financial literacy as I've already used my sheet to read my unit one assessment. I chose to use a Scantron, made things a lot easier. If you're interested in using Scantrons, totally fine. I have the machine right there. And all right, let's take a look at unit one. So this is what it's gonna look like, even though this is unit one, I haven't given my IA yet, so that's blank. I have their gender, their ID, their name, and I just have to go through and click off IEP and L. Don't touch this. This is based off of if they get below a 65, and then you do have to put in what class or what period you have them. So here's how you get their gender, ID, and name super easily. We're gonna to go to Power School, pick any class, go to Power Teacher Pro, and we are going to run a report. Go to Student Roster, and you wanna select all the classes that you want on this report spreadsheet. You just click in Semester One, skip over Advisory, and there you go. The way I have mine set up is that the gender is first, then the ID, and then the name. I would recommend doing that. So you could just copy paste format, make sure it's Excel. You can have a either orientation. I don't think that matters. And you just run report. And it'll give you a spreadsheet uh, that has all that information. You just copy it and paste it here. And it'll all uh, just populate automatically, which is super great. To figure out if a student has an IEP or is an L student, go on back to Power School. Go to attendance. And for example, my fourth period class, 
if they have a little alert, that means either it's a, a health thing or they're an L or an IEP. So for example, Diego is an L and Evelyn has an IEP. You can go through and just click off uh, the boxes based on your attendance. All right, as far as scoring exams go, this is something we went over in August, but I'll show you again really quickly. Uh, so my exam has standards that are a number and then a letter. The 3A doesn't really mean anything to me. So I put what 3A actually is for my curriculum above it. It's the risks and protections of checks, value cards, debit cards, blah, blah, blah. But these are the standards that are on my exam. So once those are typed in, I can go over here and choose the standard, lots of three A's. And my multiple choice questions are worth two points. So I would recommend making a test where that's the case. Otherwise you do have to like re, uh, like mess with the spreadsheet a little more. So just keep it at two points. If it must be one point, I'll come help you. Or you can probably figure out if you're proficient in sheets. I like to have an answer key here that doesn't really matter that much, but you must have the number of credits. If you're using the checkboxes, awesome. If they got it correct, you check it. If they got it wrong, you uncheck it. And the score will, will change automatically. All right, so then over here, you're gonna get a breakdown of how students sit on each standard. So if Isaiah is like, what do I need to work on? I'm like, man, you gotta work on uh, things like credit unions and check cashing services, whatever else. If you go to the bottom of your spreadsheet here, you'll see which questions students miss. Anything that's red means it needs to be retaught, relearned, question six, question eight. We'll be, uh, I'll be putting those questions into like warm-ups and exit tickets and all that. And then down here, the best part, the test summary. You can see everyone's average, the IEP average, L average, male, female average. And then the class period here. It's important that you put the period that they're in so that when you go to your drop down menu, that period comes up as an option. You can see how uh, classes did as a whole. So period six got the highest average. Congratulations to them. Just uh, make sure you're deleting any zeros if you don't want those factored in. You can always, like let's say York shows up, I can just drag this down and my formula will populate there. All right, so let's say you're really overwhelmed with all this and you want to grade your test your own way, you do have the option to go up here and get the basic version, make a copy. It'll go right into your drive. So please share it with me if you're going to be using this. And this is just if you cannot handle uh, the other spreadsheet, but we really want you to use that one. So it just has the IA1 and IA2 tabs. The only thing you'd have to put here is the total number of points on your exam. Let's say my exam is out of 50 and this person got a 25, little Jimmy. Uh, same way you did the power school, put their IDs in. He's male. You could see it's, all the coding is happening on the side automatically. He's in period two. He has an IEP and he is at risk. Let's say he did a little bit better. He got a 40. It automatically puts it out of 100. And now he is at a smiley face because he's not at risk. And I just go here and period two should pop up and the average would be 80. So that is another way you can do this. But if you use this spreadsheet, then you lose all of this delicious data down here and over here but we do have another option for you. If you're looking for a sample assessment, I can share out this folder with um, some sample exams. Here's my leap algebra one. I have the question number, the standard and the point value. And it's the first part is multiple choice, makes it easier to grade, second part, short answer. And then this was my, this last year's assessment data analysis. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, what you want to take away from this is this website is really helpful. Please send out your calendar invites with the date of your interim assessment. Let me know if you need any help. Again, I'm Rachel. I'm in room 310B. I have second period off and fifth period. I'm usually doing stuff, but I'm excited to go on this um, interim assessment journey with you.
All right, have a good one.